I'm Pilar Buley from Mainly Montessori, and this is 52 Positive Discipline Tools for Homeschoolers. Today, I want to talk about the challenges that we face with our children and where we want to get them to by the time that they're young adults. Now, this is an activity that I've done a lot in the past in in-person workshops, uh, but what's really surprising is that when I ask the questions in an online format, I get very much the same answers. And so what this tells me is that the challenges that we're going to talk about today and the hopes and expectations that we have for our children are really universal. And so what I did for this activity was I asked several members of one of my Facebook groups to share with me some of the challenges that they face with their elementary age children and some of the qualities or characteristics that they would like their children to have by the time the children are 18 so that they can become contributing members of society. Now I want to go through the list and talk about the challenges. In other words, where are we now? Right? What are we struggling with right now? So one of the challenges is children that are not working independently or that rely on adults too much, right? These are children that just sit there and wait for you to tell them what to do, um, don't want to make mistakes, they're, they're afraid, and so they would rather just not do anything and wait to be told, wait to be given a checklist or a worksheet, um, do that and be done. And then also, children who quit or don't follow through, right? This might be a child who's really excited about a new project and halfway through the project, when it starts getting a little hard, they quit. They just give up, they don't follow through, and oh, that can be really frustrating and scary for parents, right? Now, we also see children who are seeking external approval or they're working for rewards. And so for some reason or another, they've been conditioned to expect a reward um, in response to what they do. And so they don't want to work for their own satisfaction. So that can be a big struggle. Another struggle is apathy. Right? Children who are not interested in anything, children who don't gravitate towards any subject matter, who don't want to get engaged in any project, and it's, it's, it can be really hard to, to work with children like this and to get them excited. Now we also have children who are unfocused, scattered, or have a lack of concentration. And I want to kind of make an aside here because as some of you know, I've worked in a long, for a long time in a classroom setting. Um, and these challenges I definitely saw in a classroom setting, but I also see them among the homeschooling families that I work with. So don't think that, well, you know, this happens in the classrooms or this only happens in homeschooling because, you know, I'm, I'm a parent who doesn't know how to be a teacher. These challenges are universal and they happen regardless of whether your child is in a classroom or at home. So let's keep going. Um, another big one that came up was poor time management skills, right? Children who just don't realize that they've been sitting in front of a uh, workbook for 45 minutes um, or who don't realize that they have a class that's coming up and they're not ready for it. Um, also, disregard for limits and boundaries. So these are children who um, don't listen when you tell them to do something, um, who break the rules, who think that they're um, the boss and uh, they set their own rules and they don't really think about the impact that their behavior has on other people. Um, we also have fighting either with siblings at home or with peers in the classroom, right? So these are what you might consider, you know, the, the mean kids, the children who hurt other children or children who constantly argue with each other or tell on each other. Um, or, you know, if you're at home, your kids are always at each other's throats. These are the challenges. Um, also, we see a lot of children who are careless with their belongings or they're just really messy. Right, and so this can be, you know, for example, children who lose their things or children who uh, whose things are always breaking or who forget things at the park um, or, uh, you know, forget their jacket at school, but it becomes chronic and you can just tell that they're not really uh, being careful with their things. And so that can be a big challenge. Also, imitating peers' negative behavior. So this is when 
there is a child who, you know, is struggling and is going through a hard time. And so their behavior is having a negative impact on others. And another child copies that behavior. Um, a lot of parents feel very concerned with this situation because they feel powerless that even though they're setting boundaries and you know kind of establishing values their child is picking up on these negative behaviors that go against what the parents want and finally um, a lack of self-confidence right we see a lot children who don't believe in themselves children who don't stand up for themselves or who don't really put a lot of effort into what they're doing and so Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list. You probably have a couple more challenges that you might be facing, but I'm also sure that you're seeing a lot of struggles from your own home or your own classroom in this list, right? So this is where we are. And I don't exclude myself from this list. I very much also um, notice some of these struggles with my son and with my daughter. And I faced these struggles with my students in the past. Now let's talk about where we want our children to go. What, what goals do we have for them? What do we want them to embody when they're 18? So here we go. Where do we want to go? By the time our children are 18 years of age, more or less, what qualities do we want to see in them that will help us to know that we did our job right and that they are going to be successful in their lives? Now, these also come from the parents that I requested uh, that they share their information in my Facebook group. And so these are the same parents sharing the challenges and the uh, kind of qualities that they want for their children. And so the number one thing that most everybody said was kindness. They want to raise people who are kind, who are uh, generous to others. Now, another big one that came up was curiosity. We want to raise lifelong learners, and that comes from curiosity, from not being afraid to ask questions. We want to raise adults who are able to focus and concentrate on a task for a decent amount of time and get it done. And we also want to raise people who are tenacious, right? We want to raise people who don't give up, people who are persistent and who don't quit despite the challenges that they might face. Now, this one was really interesting because um, it was uh, given to me as skepticism. And I think that's a really valuable point because we want to raise adults who have healthy critical thinking skills, right? Adults who don't just take things at face value and that just believe whatever people tell them that are gullible. We want people who question people who think for themselves and people who come to their own conclusions based on uh, quality information that they know to be true. And also hope. And goodness knows that this year has really, um, you know, put our, our ability to have hope to the test. And so we want children that, that know that good things are coming and they're not going to give up. Also, uh, empathy and compassion. And I know those are two different things, but they are related to each other. And so I put them together because a lot of people want their, their children to grow up to have empathy and compassion, to think about others and to help others. Um, and so that goes along with being helpful, right? Being a contributing member of society. Now, gratitude was also high on the list. So we want children who appreciate what they have um, and children who are creative. Um, and creativity doesn't just mean, you know, making a really pretty art project. Creativity is in how you solve problems, um, in how you search for solutions, in how you express yourself. So there are a lot of different uh, definitions or ways of being creative. And we want them to have intrinsic motivation. We want them to work because they love it, because the outcome is really satisfying. Um, not because they're going to get paid or get a reward um, or make the boss happy. And also respect for the self, respect for oneself and respect for others. And this has to do both with self-esteem, self-confidence, but also with understanding boundaries. And so I think this encompasses a lot because it covers 
uh, setting boundaries, holding boundaries, and respecting boundaries that other people set. And we also have effective problem solving and setting and reaching goals. Now, these are all amazing qualities. And if our children grew up to have all of these qualities, I mean, what a wonderful world it would be. And the thing is, there's no reason why our children can't, right? Um, you know, if you think about it, you embody most of these qualities, if not all of them. I mean, some more than others, right? Because we're all different. But for better or worse, we have worked really hard um, throughout our childhood and into adulthood to really embrace these qualities. And we know that our children can do it too. So even if you feel like the, the, the challenges that you're facing right now are really scary and often unsurmountable, the reality is that with the right tools, they don't have to be. And so what is really interesting is that when you have the right tools, when you have the positive discipline tools that I'm sharing with you, then the challenges actually become gifts because they give you the opportunity to help your child develop problem solving skills, responsibility. They help you to uh, give your child the tools that they're going to need to move from where they are to where they're going to be. And so as you watch the videos and as you build your toolkit, start thinking about the challenges as gifts, as opportunities, and think what skill, what quality or attribute can I help my child build while we're working through this challenge? And so I hope that as you watch the videos, you watch them with this attitude, because I promise you that if you do the work, if you change your mindset, and if you practice, it's the most important part, practice, uh, then little by little, you will notice that every single challenge becomes an opportunity for change and for growth. So I look forward to continuing to work with you, to share all of these tools, and to help you put them to good use.